think of the notice, the eviction notice. Olá. Hi, Sulin. We'll be going live in three minutes. Actually, we're already live. Uh, we will be having you guys turn on your videos in three minutes. Yeah. It's just. Hello, 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 and uh, good afternoon. Welcome to uh, series two in a three-parter that we started yesterday with Marketing Magazine. Um, and uh, it was a great session yesterday. I think uh, the feedback that we received uh, from uh, all the attendees, uh, the panelists, uh, which is still coming in through today, uh, was really quite uh, interesting. So there, there seemed to have been a lot of interest in uh, MarTech. And today, what we're going to explore is uh, ad tech. 
And with me today, I have, uh, can I say illustrious or good looking or, or, or wonderfully experienced panel uh, that we've put together. And it's really my pleasure to introduce uh, the three panelists that we have today. Uh, I'll begin with uh, Sulin, Sulin Lau, who is now the regional head of country marketing from Grab. Um, and so I was reading his bio, Sulin, and it says that growing up as the nerdy daughter of an obsessive history buff uh, and wanting to be a journalist, uh, you know, who then took a, a different pathway to go into advertising. Uh, Sulin also led regional teams in uh, BBDO and uh, uh, DDB, uh, and then she went on to join Maxis as the as the head of marketing, uh, and from then on went to lead uh, Facebook's agency partnerships in Southeast Asia, before landing in on the hot seat in Grab uh, in March last year to lead the uh, marketing teams across seven countries. So uh, welcome, Solin. Good good to have you here with us. Uh, we also have uh, Alex Hui, uh, the debonair and dashing Alex Hui is now the head of digital and media solutions at uh, Invictus Blue Group. Uh, who's an avid gamer, right, who, who still games, uh, and really when he's not fretting over the next uh, big digital innovation, he finds ease in vanquishing his foes, digitally of course, is, is how he puts it, right? And finally, we, we have the pleasure of inviting or hosting Herbert Marchand, who's the country director of ADA Cambodia. Uh, and Hubert has spent the last eight years in Southeast Asia across multiple marketing functions. Uh, on the media and agency side. He's currently uh, the ADA country director of Cambodia, and he believes that to help business win in 2020's ever-changing business or consumer landscape, a new level of curiosity and digital adoption is required. And uh, to get his perspective of what's happening in the region will also be uh, very, very interesting. So welcome, guys. Now, I hope you've got your mics all unmuted. Let's just- Good go afternoon, Ray. Hello, Ray. Great, great. Hi. Nice to see you, man. So let's jump straight into it, yeah? Uh, the last seven months have been interesting, uh, to say the least. Sulin, what, what new super skills have you picked up? What, what are you doing at home if you're not I, I, I've, um, I won't bore people with it, but I've gone from having zero pets um, here in Singapore to having a succession of nine dogs coming through my house because I've become a COVID dog fosterer. We, we're hearing that. <laughs> yes, yes, th that's, that's him chiming in and says hello. Oh, right. Pops, wow. And Alex, what, what have you been up to, man? Well, I think I went on the completely opposite route from Sulin. Uh, it's the year of the rat, and I've uh, adopted two cats, uh, which just kind of got me through, you know. So I, I don't know whether there's anything to do with feng shui when you have two cats in the year of the rat, uh, but uh, it's been an enjoyable year so far. So who's chasing who in the house? Uh, I think I'm still chasing my wife. <laughs> and, and what's, what's happening in Cambodia, man? How are you keeping yourself occupied? Well, I did not get any pets uh, since lockdown. Um, I, I basically spent two years in Cambodia and, and, and my first year was uh, air travel was still open. So I was spending a lot of time between Malaysia, where, where still kind of is my base and my, and my family, friends, um, and Cambodia. Um, since lockdown, actually, it kind of gave me the opportunity to to explore Cambodia more and to travel more within the country. Um, so I've, I've explored lovely beaches, great food, and uh, that's kind of been my silver lining of, um, of the pandemic. So it sounds more of a holiday than work, yeah? I know. Balancing, balancing, yeah. Now listen, guys, uh, you know, the, the session yesterday was quite instructive uh, uh, when we started talking about marketing technology. Uh, it was still a bit of a gray area, right? In terms of uh, understanding what marketing technology was. Uh, so as we got on to, to the hour, uh, you know, we talked about uh, data. How do you collate your data? How do you look at your data? Uh, what do you use the data for? And then, you know, what are some of the tools that you, that you can potentially use? But that is also predicated on understanding your audience first, yeah? Uh, before you, you think about, you know, buying a Rolls Royce or a Proton and so on. So it was a, it was a good conversation in that sense. Uh, so for today, I would like to begin perhaps with Sulin to say, how can we demystify the term ad tech? What, what exactly is, is advertising technology? Um, the first rule of uh, demystifying ad tech is to stop using the, the term, right? So I, I, I think that 
the advertising industry has a, a, a lovely quirk that we like to invent lots and lots of new terms to make something sound very clever when actually marketing is something that's very commonsensical. And if it doesn't sit well with your common sense, then it probably doesn't, it doesn't really work that, that well. Yeah. Um, so the first thing to do when you're approaching the idea of digital ad tech and all that stuff is try to put it into words your wife or your mom can understand why you're doing something if right. you can explain it to your mom or your, your sister or your brother or your wife why you're doing something then it's probably something worth doing if you can't explain it then you're just getting wrapped up with the the sexy jargon um and it's probably not going to be money well spent right and and so alex just taking on from there how would you explain this to your wife <laughs> i'm pretty sure uh she's uh, tuned in right now uh, I think uh, just to put things simply, right? It's it's uh, at the end of the day, it's just about putting products on sale on the internet. Um, when you look at uh, at tech, it's as simple as that. And I think that's what we have been doing, uh, at least from my inside of the industry. That's what we've been doing. We're helping uh, our clients' brands uh, to put their products and their services online, and just to let uh, let these products reach out to all the millions of potential customers out there. It's as simple as that. And, and uh, just so pulling from that, uh, Hubert, is it really that simple? Is it, is it as easy as putting something uh, online? Or, you know, because we have things like social selling and all of that as well, right? Uh, yeah. So, uh, what, what yeah. Do you mean? yeah, I think, I think, I think the, obviously the pandemic has, has, has brought forth a lot of change and consumer patterns have been changing and I'm sure we'll, we'll be touching on those topics uh, today. Um, and, and, and people are, are, are overnight changing the way they market and changing the way they, they um, try and market their brands. Um, but I think uh, um, even though the world changed, I think the fundamentals of marketing hasn't changed. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's still at the core, it's about understanding your consumer, it's about understanding your market. Um, so I think um, getting your principles right uh, will guide you making the right decisions when thinking about what, what ad tech should you adopt. So, so what, what we're saying here is that, go back to the basics first, uh, look at the fundamentals of marketing, understanding your, your audience, uh, building a product that is suitable of a certain quality, uh, you know, get, get the basics right, and then potentially then look, look at your current advertising methods and perhaps enhancing that. Would, would that be uh, something that, that we can agree on or? I, yeah, I think so. I think a, a, a simple way to look at it, right, is that everybody knows what advertising is, right? Even like in our grandmother's days, you put a you put a note, you put a couple of words on a sign outside your store, and that's advertising, right? The the only real difference that ad tech allows is that instead of thinking about the space being an ad, ad tech allows you to think about the eyeball that it's being served to as what you buy. So instead of buying a space, you buy an eyeball and you can decide whether that eyeball is a woman, of a man, a young person, an old person, a person who likes gaming or a person that likes pets. Mm. So that, that's the way to think about ad tech. Buy eyeball, don't buy space. So, so I, love, I love that, right? Because you know, as, as we drive through the streets, we see on lampposts, for example, you know, uh, get your loan here, right? Cepat kaya ka, whatever it is, the advertising, whatever it is, right? But what, what it says that is that you, you put a signboard outside your house or a place of business. You're, you're, you're expecting people to come to you in the traditional way is that you go out and then you give a leaflet or you, you take an ad in, in the radio and so on and so forth, right? Uh, uh, getting, getting people to, to you. And, and uh, to take what Alex said earlier on, if you're, if you're putting things online, what, what it says is that you're really trying to, to get the eye, you're proactively reaching out to his eyeballs. You're, you're going on to, to get these eyeballs to, to come to you, right? In, in a far more expanded manner at, at scale. Uh, so as businesses get onto this e-commerce platforms or, or get into to marketing technology, um, Alex, you know, uh, what, what role does this ad tech play or could play uh, for SMEs, right? So assuming they are less than 10 or 15 people, They've got a restaurant or, or a laundrette or, or whatever else, right? No, they want to get into Grab, for example, right? Or any other platform. What should they be thinking about? Or is that something they should be thinking about at all? Yeah, all right. Uh, thanks for the question, Ray. I think uh, let's, let's just take a step back and, and kind of think of ourselves as uh, consumers right now. 
um, think about if you are looking for a, um, you're thinking of going to a nice restaurant um, to celebrate a birthday, what's the first thing that you do? Um, chances are you're going to be look, you're going to go online, you're going to go search for restaurants nearby, or there's going to be a particular way that you're searching, right? Um, best uh, buffet, best international buffet and things like that. That's what you're going to do. Awesome. And immediately after that, what you're going to do is uh, you may click into their website, but chances are you're going to search for them on uh, Facebook. So if you have to think about uh, consumer journey at all and how attack plays a role in, in marketing, you have to also think about social space now being a commerce space. Uh, not many people are going to website these days. We're going to be spending a lot more of our time on uh, social platforms whether it's the likes of uh, Facebook or Instagram, but that's where you're going to be getting most of your information. So that's just a way of kind of um, tweaking the consumer journey a little bit and understanding our consumers who are going to be spending less time on the website and spending a little bit more time on social. And if that's the case, uh, what can you do uh, from an ad tech standpoint to kind of grow your social commerce? Hubert, what are you looking at from, from Cambodia, right? What, what, is the, what is the rate? Firstly, what is the access, right? Internet access. And uh, secondly, then, you know, what, what is the uh, rate of adoption for business? Yeah, so, I mean, they call Cambodia the leapfrog kingdom um, because they, they tend to go very fast. They tend to skip, skip uh, uh, steps in the, in the normal evolution. Um, in Malaysia, we all knew the, the desktop phase and that, that's something that didn't happen here. Um, Cambodia was straight to mobile. Um, so what, what you're seeing here is, is, that, is that sometimes they, they, they um, skip steps and then they go to something that you didn't think the country was ready for. Um, so for example, right now you see a lot of obviously um, smartphones are getting cheaper, uh, mobile data here is very fast, it's not expensive. Um, so all of a sudden mobile internet is there for everyone for the taking. Um, and, and, and in uh, emerging countries like this, you see that the internet kind of equals Facebook because that's where people growing up. That's for them is 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 kind of online. If you ask people here, can you search for this? They don't go to Google search, but they go to the, the Facebook search bar. Um, so that's basically their world. And um, you 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 see the you see the rise of social selling. You see people opening up little businesses. Entrepreneurship is uh, is, is is a big thing here. Um, so yeah, um, the country is being enabled, um, the adoption is happening, and uh, I'm sure we're going to see a lot of growth over the next few years here. You know, Celine, uh, you know, we've seen, we've seen numbers uh, coming up, right? Businesses shutting down, uh, and, and we read it in, in the papers all the time, you know, for example, pilots out of a job, uh, opening up a, a corner cafe, Captain's Corner, uh, and, and, and the like, right? Uh, most of these guys don't have a website. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, what they're, they're relying on is really on social commerce and, and, and word of mouth, so to speak. Right. So on WhatsApp groups, pushing things out, they, they don't have a, a, a physical presence. Uh, you know, the, the gentleman who was a captain did say that he had no time to even look at getting onto platforms uh, or, or marketplaces because he's just too busy on just on the ground, right? serving people. He had no time to do delivery as well. So as we think about that uh, and, and we tell, you know, business must go digital. They have to go digital to survive. Then again, you see a couple of these little spots, right? Who, who don't completely rely, uh, rely on digital marketing, but on social and, and, and WhatsApp. What is, what is your take on that from a Grab's point of view? I, I think Grab takes a very broad view of what is um, digital marketing and online commerce. So we also serve people who want to operate using WhatsApp. Um, I, I think people are more familiar with um, our normal, the, mo the more common consumer model, where you just open the app, you go to the, you know, you press on food, and then you look for curry laksa, right? Mm -hmm. And then you, you find a curry laksa or a fried chicken or whatever. Um, so we have a lot of our, uh, uh, the, the small businesses that have joined the platform on that model. We also have two other types of small businesses joining the platform as well. Uh, I'll, I'll give a, 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 an example of um, uh, restaurants as well. There are restaurants who already have hired their delivery guy, right? So, and it's a good friend, so they don't want to put that guy out of a job, right? So they have a guy already. On a larger scale, you have people like McDonald's or Pizza Hut or Domino's that already have a bunch of people that they've already hired and they pay every month to deliver pizzas and, and burgers. 
Grab also serves that those guys as well because we are a, a demand generation platform. So you, you have millions of people opening an app to see what you want, what, what they're hungry for. Mm -hmm. and, and the app helps take you all the way to what, what dishes, what prices and everything. And there's also a way for you to order right. uh, uh, on, uh, and self pick up if you want. So, so the, there's that model. The last model actually is the model that we rarely talk about, but uh, almost all the social sellers in all the countries know. Um, we have a very sizable business of people that sell stuff online and need a delivery service because obviously they don't, have, they haven't hired their cousin to, 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 to deliver their, you know, sambal pedas or their, or their, you know, their beautiful mask and all the guys making home businesses. So we have a, a very large sizable group of pe people who just use us as on-demand logistics because it's as easy as booking something. If you have five deliveries that day, you, you can send that one person on five deliveries in one, in one sitting. And it's very on demand because people want their, their, their sambal padas tonight, right? So I, I guess we take a very broad view. We've also, I think this year, because we had such a surge of people coming onto the platform, they, they, they're everything from a Michelin star restaurant in Singapore to food court hawker stalls in Penang. We have a lot of these people, right? And so we've tried to build ways in which they like to operate. So we've got like what they don't, they want to come collect payment upfront. They don't like cash on delivery because maybe sometimes you can't find the customer. So we have things like your WhatsApp payment links for grab pay so people can pay in advance just on their phones. So stuff like that. I think what you're seeing is that there are hundreds of thousands of businesses in Malaysia and millions in Southeast Asia that never thought that they'd ever need to think about an online version of their business. Absolutely. And when they have to think about it because of the situation we're in now, they look for an easy way that doesn't confuse the hell out of them. And, and, and I think for us, the simplicity is super important. So on, on that note, uh, I think uh, some of the comments that, that I've got over the last couple of months was, uh, you know, uh, your, your opportunity, you see, we understand the, the need for advertising, right? There's no choice because like you rightly pointed out, there's a surge coming up, right? So if I were to just look uh, and say uh, Fitbit, for example, or whatever, and it's going to be like millions of people wanting to sell, uh, you know, that, that particular uh, SKU or item. So I just want to understand this also from Alex, from your point of view, because there's advertising in apps. There's advertising with Google, uh, you know, search words, whatever else. Not. There, there's also banner advertising and all that, right? First question, right? Is this ad tech? When, when, when I go in as an SME and I say, listen, I'm already on Grab, but there's so many nasi lemak, right? So, so how do I advertise in the app and push my nasi lemak up within, within the app, number one? And number two, do I need to also marry that with, with search, you know, Google, Google Display and all of that, right? Mm -hmm. Is that ad tech as well? Well, I, I think uh, this goes back to the very first question, right? Uh, how do we kind of simplify it with ad tech? I think uh, at the end of the day, it's uh, like I said, in simplicity, it's just about getting your product and messaging up. Uh, but at the end of that, you have to think about the millions of possible platforms uh, that you can go into. Uh, I think Sulin brought up a really good point just now in saying that uh, there are millions of people kind of onboarding themselves to Grab. But before you onboard to Grab, you have to understand why are they doing that? That's because this entire uh, COVID has become a catalyst for digitalization. Uh, I never really believed the day that Malaysians uh, will spend more time um, ordering food online than actually buying food physically online themselves. And we're seeing that happen in a very short period of time. Uh, so with that happening, it's just uh, adapting to the needs of the consumers. And looking at the word ad tech itself, it's just giving, uh, giving uh, brands, giving business owners a leverage, a digital leverage for them to reach out to their customers. Uh, but at the same time, uh, it's also looking beyond what these things are meant to do. Uh, just to give you an example, I think uh, platforms like Grab or uh, Lazada, uh, they are they intended to be a distribution uh, channel initially. But the way I see it right now, these platforms have become a mode of discovery. You know, They're not just about um, getting product from point A to point B. They are, they are also serving as a platform to let people be introduced to new products out there. Like you were saying just now, the homemade face mask, you know, the... Uh, the, the belacan chilies uh, that people are making at, at home. So 
these have become platforms to, for, to let people be aware of that. And it is exactly what advertising has always been doing. You know, from the signboard outside your home to a uh, display banner telling you that uh, there's this thing for sale. Right now, it's just about taking the next step. Uh, and I think that's what uh, a tech is able to do. And uh, that's what uh, would definitely benefit the, uh, the business owners. And I think just want to want to kind of chime in a little bit on uh, some of the initiatives that MDEC has actually been doing. I think, uh, Ray, you and I, we were working on the Go e-commerce uh, campaign. Yeah. And I think that itself, um, to me, it is an ad tech. It is an ability to let brands, first-time business owners, small uh, and SME uh, audiences, and give them a voice on a larger place uh, on platforms like the, like Grab and other e-commerce platforms. And I think that's uh, that, to me, is uh, what it is. But, but I think also to, to that point, uh, you know, the perhaps yeah, perhaps some of the businesses are not looking at the treasure trove of data they may have, right? Uh, some of them obviously don't collect the data, right? Uh, if, if you're on a store, you, you don't bother about it. You just know your customers, right? Others do. Uh, Hubert, I just want to get your, your views there and say that because you, people are saying, oh, no choice. You've got to go into digitalization. You, you must have some form of presence online, right? Whether it's a website or, or a Facebook page or whatever. Yeah. Uh, but before you even go into advertising, how important is it to, to find your audience, to understand your audience? And, and how would you look at it? Is there some primary and, and external data uh, points that you can look at? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's absolutely critical, right? People say that data is the new oil, um, and that's not an overstatement. It's, it's absolutely critical to, to, to understand your, your customer to a T. Um, I think in general, if you kind of look at it from a 30 feet view, like in typically marketing is done in three phases. One is your, your diagnosis, where you understand your customer and your market. Then you have your strategy, um, where you decide your target audience and your positioning, and then you have your tactics, which is your your four Ps and your communication and all that. Um, if you don't get the first one right, the rest will be wrong, right? So I think I think if you make one ad tech decision today, um, it is to understand your customers uh, in depth. And I think the the the, the way you do that uh, is kind of like 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 many things in life, Raymond, you, you kind of start at the end and you, and you work your way backwards. You try to reverse engineer things. Um, so as an SME, you kind of need to, like you need to paint that perfect consumer picture. Um, and, and then you need to uh, reverse engineer what kind of data sources do I need for this? Um, and I think for any business that moves their, their business online, there are two um, there are kind of two areas that you really need to focus on. One is, is on your consumer profiles and your consumer personas. Um, and, and, and then second thing is, is basically your, your consumer journey, right? So once I've identified that customer as my target customer, uh, whether new or repeat, like what are the steps that that person needs to take to, 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 to go from raising awareness of my brand um, or product all the way down to a purchase and a repeat purchase. So, um, um, and I think kind of uh, end of year is coming. People are kind of dialing down. They're probably going to have a glass of wine under a, under a Christmas tree. And um, it's, it's kind of a perfect time to do this. Um, right. And we know that kind of the marketing budgets are, are being reduced. Uh, times are hard. Um, but these things are surprisingly kind of cost efficient to do. Um, I have to paint your persona picture. You, you, you just need to go out there. You need to do your surveys, do your focus groups, do your ethnography. Um, at the same time, map out your customer journey, right? Like what are the touch points uh, that people are doing um, when they engage with my products? Um, and I think if you are to start collecting data on anything, it is it is those two buckets that you need to that you need to look at first. You know, you know on that on that point, Hubert and I, and I want to open it up to, to all of you, right? So, uh, so assumption: I have a burger stall or a, or a pocket me stall, right? Uh, so in the morning or the night before, I'm preparing, I'm buying all my ingredients. I'm gonna to go to my stall and I'm, I'm cooking in there. Right? I don't have the time to 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 really go out and and look at this data. Right? I'm just saying this from a, from a low level, right? But of course, as you go up the ladder, then, then you, you have the capability with your POS, POS systems or whatever else you're collecting, right? So I'm, I'm just looking at, 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 at least the Malaysian environment. I'm not sure about Singapore, so then uh, Indonesia would probably be similar to Malaysia, and I'm not sure about Cambodia, right? 
So as you, as you look at that, when we say that, let, let's go out and get the data, but sometimes it's just not possible. Even your weekends, you know, you've got your children and you've got your others to, to do that, right? Absolutely. So, so is there something to be said to say, okay, listen, I'll go to Grab, right? Whatever, lah, I pay 100, 200 or it's a free on boarding, right? But at least I can get some data from Grab at some point. Is that, is that true, uh, Sulin? Can I then use yeah. that? I, I, of course, Grab has data. But that's Will you share it with me? Yeah, um, <laughs> we'll talk <laughs> on the side. But of course, Grab has data, right? <laughs> but that would not... That would not be my advice. Um, maybe I can share a perspective, right? So I look after, my job in Grab is to look after the marketing we do in each country. And in each country, the marketing head basically has independence around what the plans are, how they run the team, headcount and all that stuff. Right. However, they're not all the same size. Right. So let's take a big, my biggest market where we're in 500 cities, um, Indonesia, right? And marketing to somebody in marketing to the expats that are trapped in Bali are very different from marketing to Jakarta people who are locked down under PSBB right now. Marketing to a, a person in Palembang, very different. So you need quite a lot of data to not send money. And we're looking with a lot of money and we have a lot of staff. So I have 140 people in marketing in Indonesia, right? There, we do a lot of cutting. I just came from a meeting where we do, we do a lot of cutting of data. We have enough people. I have a four man analytics team that's how important data is in a market with that complexity and I have the headcount. I don't think anybody else, you know, that might be listening on this has 140 people in marketing right. ever. Even in the mid-sized countries, I might have 30 people in marketing, say in the Philippines. But then I get to Cambodia and Cambodia, I have three people. And three people might be more or less than some of the people on the call. You might have three people in marketing. You might have less than three people in marketing. But what is possible and what is advisable when you have three or two or one person in marketing or half a person in marketing or just your son's spare time to do social media updates, yeah. maybe that's true, mm. is to remember what's important. Data is not the boss. We, the, what, your, 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 your own, you do know certain things. And these are the important things to know as a business, right? No matter what size you are. How much can I sell something for what I want to sell? How many of these things do I want to sell? Do I want to sell 10,000 to, to, to keep the lights on? Mm -hmm. do, I, do I want to sell, do I only need to sell 500 because you know, I can only make that many wonton mees every day? How many do I want to sell? How much profit do I make on each one of those wonton mees that I can take and afford to use to generate another wonton mee sale, right? That's the most important thing that you need to know. If you know that, then you choose your digital or marketing plan based on just those things. And, and that's actually the best advice for a small team. Mm. My Cambodia team, they sometimes get really caught up because they see the interesting analysis that my Indonesian and Singapore teams are doing, right? They're like, we want in on that. I was like, actually, you don't have time for that. You're, you're doing other things with your life. So simplify. I think that that's, that's a super important one. The second thing is actually, I, there is a difference that, in advantage between small and large companies. Mm. So when you have a very, very, very large budget, you, you, get, you get benefits from bulk buying, right? You get benefits because you buy a lot and you get a lower cost. So that works with fish, that works with media as well. Except in digital media, mm. except in auction-based media where a small company has just as much opportunity to get a lower cost to, for a customer than the biggest company in your country. So the guy that is trying to sell a little handphone in his handphone shop in Sungai Wang might be getting a better cost per acquisition than Maxis if that person is smarter. And mm. so I think some of these places where there are slight there are no disadvantages of being big is where small companies should, should participate. It is absolutely the same in Grab. If, you're a, if you are, let me pick somebody. Nasi Lemak, Village Park Nasi Lemak mm. versus KFC. Equal opportunity to perform well, despite the huge differences in number of outlets, number of staff, everything. 
and how smart they are with using that one dollar of spend on our platform actually creates very big differences in in some of their performance on our platform. So this is uh, so interesting, right? Um, Alex, right? So two questions for you now, right? Um, if, if we think about what Sulin just said, and I, I'm a small business, right? Uh, you are? <laughs> <they're> small. <laughs> okay. uh, if, I were to, if I were to think about my, my customers, are there any tools or any suggestions uh, that you can give me? And this, is a, this is a question, by the way, that's coming up yeah, by, by our listeners to say, if I'm a small business, how do I go about thinking about my customers? Because right now, I'm just staying there. If I'm in Tamantun, I know my, 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 my crowd right? is going to be like, Possibly the Tamantun crowd, but within this environment where I'm losing 50% of my, my regular walk ins, how do I then figure out who, who my customer is? Number one. Yeah? Mm -hmm. And number two, with, with, my, with my really limited resources, I'm going on WhatsApp. But is there any other way that I can put some money into some tools to help me push the word out? And, and what, what would that be? All right. Uh, that was a really, really good question on that. Sulin just also mentioned that uh, she has a team of uh, well, 140 marketeers that's going to be doing all the marketing work. That's for them. bigger than uh, in blue, man. <laughs> comparable. That's comparable yeah. in terms of skills. Let's just go there. Uh, but yeah, <laughs> the amount of people that's been work that's working on the marketing, yes, it skills. But one thing you have to understand is that for SMEs, the amount of work that has already been done to make advertising tools to make advertising technologies, analytical tools, um, creative platforms, um, social management platforms. The amount of work that has been put in over the last couple of years has made it very simple for people to actually operate it. So your 140 marketers in Grab is equivalent to uh, a 50 people startup that is focusing on uh, social analytics, for example. And that is what Facebook has been doing. And that's why what makes certain tools like face, uh, Facebook's own uh, manager versus um, uh, LinkedIn's own self buying platforms, uh, mm -hmm. even to a certain degree, uh, once TikTok is open up uh, and you can buy uh, TikTok ads with, uh, by yourself, mm -hmm. that is what makes it simple. You know, uh, We talked about trying to make attacks simple and this is what all these big tools have done. Uh, all the big advertisers, all the big brands have been using it for years uh, and it has actually evolved into a very easy to use tool for a lot of SMEs. Mm. Uh, and going into identifying audiences on these platforms, uh, at the end of the day, it is right. Uh, KFC will be able to compete, uh, sorry, Village Park will be able to compete with a platform like KFC simply because you're not on the same uh, fighting grounds. Uh, you're not on the same battlegrounds. Mm. Uh, Village Park is located in Uptown. I'm guessing uh, from that standpoint itself, so, uh, I mean, especially now, given that there's a lockdown, you're not supposed to be traveling too much. Yeah. It's, it makes it easier. You know, your audience segment will definitely be first geographic. And that tool is easily available in almost every single uh, ad tech tool out there. And you can kind of use that to first identify audience. Number two, uh, fried chickens. I think uh, Sulin knows people love chickens, especially in Malaysia. And that's something that's easily searched up, whether it's interest in food, uh, people who are searching for uh, food deliveries, uh, people exploring uh, restaurants around, uh, restaurants nearby. All these are tools and signals and all these data have been aggregated into a very simple to use uh, platforms. Uh, yes, uh, given that uh, on an agency level or from a corporate level and enterprise level like ours, uh, there will be certain tools and functions uh, that's available to us that may not be available to uh, the general masses. But it doesn't take away from the fact that most SMEs and most uh, entrepreneurs will have the capability to log into these tools, go through a one or two day training and really figure out what is available to them. And from there, be able to carve out certain things. There will be, of course, uh, caveat here is that there will be certain functions again, that's not available and, or it takes a little bit of experience uh, for you to really understand how to use these tools. But it, it is there. Yeah, it is as simple as that. So when, you, when you talk about trainings and all of that, but I just want to jump to you and, and see. Mm -hmm. that. So that's important. We, we understand that, right? The, the reskilling and the upskilling is super critical, right? Even in my team right now, you know, we took them to Facebook, we got LinkedIn, you know, we, we, we exposed them to Google. It's just absolutely critical. And, and those are just not the only tools, right? But those are the basic level tools that you must, right? 
So yeah. two questions here for you, and this is coming in from uh, Sandesh uh, as well. Uh, firstly, is how do I how do I convince my boss with the shrinking revenue that I need to spend more into to upskilling, reskilling, and going into digital? Hmm. Right. Uh, good. Good question. Good question. Absolutely. Yeah. Great question. The question is: Have I missed out any other tools, or is there other tools that I've underutilized? For example, uh, Google Analytics that, that allows me to you know pick up some of that data straight away, uh, and and so on. Right. Uh, so two questions there. Yeah. Budget, budget. Um, I mean, uh, I think I think it, it applies to many, many businesses that, that marketing budgets are shrinking and the expectations of those shrunken marketing budgets have increased, right? So as a marketer, you have less money and you have more to do. Um, so I think it's 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 a matter of uh, it's a matter of being 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 smart about it. I think um, um, Obviously, look for look for opportunities in the earned media space. Not everything has to be paid. I think there's a lot of creative ways uh, uh, of how earned media can be can be achieved. Um, um, I think also when it comes to kind of digital marketing investments, uh, be it on the on the paid media or like on the kind of uh, tech enhancing side of things, um, it is very important to for your digital initiatives to measure the right things. Um, there's, there's a lot of metrics available when you run your campaigns, ranging from all the way kind of at top of the funnel to your, your, your impressions. Um, but the further down the funnel you are able to measure, the better understanding you get of, hey, what is actually the impact of my campaign? Mm -hmm. um, once you get to the level of being able to measure a cost per sale, um, a return on ad spend, or maybe a, a, um, maybe a cost per lead. Mm -hmm. um, those are the kind of metrics that you can then bring to your boss to say, hey, listen, I'm not just raising awareness here. Time for tough, I'm driving sales for you. Mm -hmm. um, and that then also allows you to, to, to justify your, your, your investments. Um, and I think actually there's a lot of, since we're talking about ad tech, there's a lot of, um, uh, tools out there, which is kind of your second question. There's a lot of tools out there that enhance the way you buy media, to do it more efficiently, um, to, 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 to get more bang for buck and more ROI on, on, on your digital media spends. So as long as you measure the right things, as long as you can say, listen boss, uh, last month our, our, our return on ad spend was 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 10 bucks but today it's 15 and it's because of this tool he's going to pop the champagne and he's going to be happy with you so i think it's it's about it's about measuring the right things um and then basically building the case around it you need to understand where was i before i started changing or before i started doing specific initiatives right. and then compare it to 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 your uh results posts right so Sulin, on, on that point because you know, I'm I'm telling my my boss, right? Hey, listen, give me a bit more money. You know, I, I need to be upskill, and I think the best way now to do it is let's get a presence on on Grab amongst any other things, right? On, on Grab, for example. Uh, but there's so many masus, there's so many nasi lemak, there's so many you know whatever on Grab, right? What do I? So this is getting down to the nitty gritty, right? If I say, okay, let's get the SME food businesses onto Grab, for example. But how can I? What do I need to do on Grab? Can I can I put money to push my thing up? Uh, and, and you know what what can I do? Can you talk us through some of the things? But first, I'd, I'd like to address something. Right, I think the reality is, no matter whether you're a big company or a small company, your budget for marketing in 2020 is less than in 2019 because your revenues are less. Except if you're debt all, maybe. Okay, if you're debt all, your revenues are more. Right, but Marketing is always a function also of, it's a business tool, so it's, your, your budgets will be less. I don't think any reasonable marketeer can actually say that, you'll, you know, give me extra money so I do digital. I don't think that's how you position digital. You do digital because it's going to give you more bang for buck when your budgets are overall sh shrinking. That's and and that, that is going to be more true. Um, in every market here, I, th I think if you look at ADAX trends in Malaysia or any of the countries in Southeast Asia, you'll see that movement shifting towards digital as budgets overall shrink, right? So one is that assume you have less money to play with. Each one of those dollars has to go further. There, there are actually more than one way to spend money 
in digital to generate sales demand. You can spend it on a category called advertising, where the way in which you are paying for it is you pay for an exposure. So then you drive down the cost of the exposure. You can also, there's a form of advertising where you, you kind of optimize for conversion. You're still paying for the exposure, but you're telling the machines in Google and Facebook that please optimize, please AI, please optimize my dollars for sales and conversion. So that's kind of advertising still, but you're paying for conversion. The other way where you're actually seeing on Shopee, on Grab, on, you know, is that same dollar that you do on exposure, you put into offers. So that offer can take, it's the same dollar to you, but there's many ways to spend it to get demand. The assumption when we started this was ad tech. I, I tried not to use it except to repeat the, the question. Add dollars in marketing to generate demand. The, if you absolutely, that's why I said, if you know exactly how much you need to sell, how, many, how much margin you make, take a small, decide how much of that margin you're willing to spend on generating demand. Some portion of that should go on exposure. Some portion of that should go on transaction mm. as in offers, especially if you're, you need to create some sort of um, interesting uh, kind of like appeal, right? If you're a small brand. And, and, and those many platforms now offer that as standard. It's not hard to do. Basically you tick a box. Is it 5%, 10%, 20%? Is it buy one, free one? You, you, it's, it's very standardized. And it's the, probably the strategies that you were already deploying offline. Mm -hmm. One of the things that we encourage a lot of our newest guys to do is actually just pay for part of the delivery. Because that, that just gets your, a lot of your older customers to think, oh, I'm paying for the same amount for the wonton me and I'm getting a 50% off my delivery fee. Maybe I'll support the wonton me guy. So you can also opt for those things. To you, it's the same amount of expense, but you can put it on different things. Pure exposure, conversion generating exposure, or offer transact offer incentive for transactions. And we always advise a mix of them on the platform. Mm. You know, so on, on that point, so uh, uh, Alex, uh, marketing panel, right? Uh, so I think Sulin put it really very, uh, I think it, it puts it into perspective on how we can use that dollar, this shrinking dollar or this pool of dollars that we have. Uh, but there's also a question here coming up, uh, asking the, the panelists, and I'm, I'm going to put it to you to say, uh, a lot of the digital marketing agents Right. By default, we'll say, assuming you've got 15,000, assuming, right? Uh, they'll say, let's go into Google Display, Google AdWords, let's get a search. I'll give you 50,000 impressions, right? And, and that's the success measure of the campaign, right? Then you're going to get uh, lead gen. And a lot of times the client go, that's really bad cold gens coming through. Like, you know, 80% cannot be used, right? So, how do you, if, if you've got 5,000, you want to go into Facebook and you want to go into Google, for example, right? You just want to build that awareness because they're two different objectives. You build the awareness or you want to turn it into a lead gen campaign. That, that is how you, you, you kind of tune your, your performance, right? What is your thought for, for small businesses with, uh, or all businesses with now shrinking sort of marketing budget? Yeah, so um, I'll just take on the first part of the question, right? Let's just uh, make the assumption that you are a small business uh, with very limited budget. <clears throat> so we're just going to start there first. Uh, I have to put it out there. Uh, we're not the developers of the tools. I'm pretty sure uh, Sulin, Hubert, you guys will agree. We don't develop these uh, attacks. We just use them. We utilize them to the best of our capabilities. So put it out and say that uh, if your budget is small, there is almost no way for you to really look at bottom funnel kind of conversions, simply because platform takes time to learn. Um, we talked about, about um, AI. We talked a, lot, a little bit about uh, optimization. I know it takes time uh, for certain things to optimize. I know Sulin is shaking her head right now because maybe her small budget uh, is not the 2,000 ringgit, 3,000 ringgit that we're talking about. Uh, but th there are certain limitations. Uh, if a client comes up to us right now and say that, hey, uh, I want to run a lead generation campaign. Uh, I, have two, I have two weeks to hit the targets. I only have 5,000 ringgit. The, the tool itself sometimes don't even let you optimize towards leads. But you can look for alternatives. You can look for proxies. Uh, proxies such as uh, website clicks, uh, landing page, uh, time spent uh, on websites, uh, quality traffic going to your website or going into your platforms and spending quality time. 
So there are proxies to it, maybe not necessarily leads or sales, but there are other uh, mid funnel uh, objectives that's a little bit easier to hit, uh, mm -hmm. simply because of, of factor of time, factor of budget, uh, uh, when it comes to optimizing campaigns. Uh, that's number one, right? Uh, number two, uh, assuming budgets aside, uh, we're not talking about budgets right now, we're talking about ultimate and uh, final uh, marketing objectives. Mm. This itself, I think brands have to first, uh, not just brands, I think business owners and brands have to first be very clear about what they want to do. Mm. Because, uh, and also because you have to understand each of the markets itself. Let me just give you an example of, uh, of an automotive brand uh, that uh, I used to work for. Uh, mm. The clients spend, when it comes to automotive, right? Trying to sell a car, uh, most of the ultimate goal at the end of the day is uh, I want to get someone to book a test drive. Uh, book a test drive, book a test drive. Even Facebook has come up with uh, lead generation forms that's designed uh, for automotive segment for you to book a test drive. Select time, select date, select which dealers that you want. But when you think about it back in Malaysia, or at least from a local market standpoint, not many people who want to buy a car will actually book a test drive. The last time, uh, maybe it's just because it's my own family and friends, but when the last time we bought a car, it was just a random trip to a dealer to have a look at it. Never made any leads. Uh, we never dropped any information prior to that. Yes, we've uh, searched about it. We Googled it a little bit. Uh, we kind of know roughly what models or what range we're looking at, but we pop up in the shop after that. So we don't really drop leads, you know, but yet when it comes to digital marketing uh, or from a marketer standpoint, that's what we keep chasing. And I think this mismatch in the realities of, how consumers are acting versus the realities that the marketers wants to see or expect can cause a fair bit of uh, distrust, right? And I think just taking a step back from that, if we know exactly what you want and if it's realistically doable uh, from a marketing standpoint, digital marketing standpoint, then by all means, go ahead. But there are going to be challenges. There are going to be barriers. It's not a uh, magical box where you click on one button and then leads comes flying in or sales starts flying in. That is just not how that, how digital marketing works. You know, I think there's a lot of expectations on it, but there are certain barriers that are going to be there. And I think as long as you work within um, the, the premise, work within the barriers that you know is going to be there, uh, then you just have much better results or at least uh, results that you're looking for. Right. And, and, uh, as we think about just technology, right? I want to look at the other side, the recipient of this, this uh, ad tech, right? Uh, but if you look at who's taking that, it's, it's your aunties, your uncles, your, your, your cousins, your, your mates in a, in a bar, whatever it is, right? Um, and so we know, for example, in Malaysia, that is about maybe 10 million in there that are savvy enough to have a smartphone and, and get this delivered. Right? But we have 33 million, in Malaysia. we've got 6 million in Singapore. I think Africa is doing 12, 15 million population, if I'm not mistaken, thereabouts, yeah. So if you look at the other side of it, does this all make any sense? Because there's a human in there, and if he doesn't know how to use his phone well enough or, or to interact or to buy, yeah. uh, is, will, will ad tech have to coexist with traditional? Or do you think that it will, over the next one or two years, ad tech will eventually just overtake traditional and this, there will be a need for traditional? Yeah. I think, I think they, they recently, I think right now kind of chess is a big thing again, right? Through, uh, through the Netflix uh, series that's out there. And I recently stumbled upon um, uh, an interview with Gary Kasparov, who was the former sure. master, chess master, right? And he was asked the question uh, in the future, who will, who will own the world? Um, and uh, 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 is it going to be machines or people? And his answer was the people who manage the machines. Um, so I don't think that EdTech at some point will be, sorry for using the word so that, um, I don't think EdTech is, is kind of like the, 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 the end all to, to, to things. Um, it is about uh, like how you use it and also understanding that the person that you're trying to reach is still a human, right? Even though he might manifest himself in your analytics as one impression or as one one click you still need to understand what is what is behind it you still need to understand that that person is actually yeah, um, uh, uh, flesh and blood it's a person with with 
emotions and with sentiments and with behaviors. And the better you get to understand those uh, sentiments and, 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 and behaviors, that's, that's where your success ratio will, will, will increase. Um, so yeah, it is, it is going to be a matter of um, kind of combining people with, with, with machines um, that will drive the success of this. And, and to that point, Celine, if you're talking about humans, right? We, we were full of emotions all the time, right? Mm -hmm. Somebody, my wife shouts at me today, if I go online and I get a bad experience, I'm going to shout that bugger, right? There's, there's no one there, but I'm going to shout anyways. Right? So a question has also come in about brand loyalty, right? So as you use this ad tech, right? You, you try and automate a lot of this. And, and to what uh, Hubert said just now, you know, you kind of like sometimes forget that's, that's flesh and blood out there. Uh, I want to get your view about how this can add on to brand loyalty, number one, and customer service when you're doing ad tech because you're opening yourself up to online, right? Uh, I'm not going to answer any question that has ad tech, the phrase ad tech inside. You will drop it. Yeah, yeah no, no, no. I'm, I mean, I'm joking, but I mean it for a fact, right? I mean, nobody today says telephone pintar, right? Nobody says smartphone, right? You just call it a phone. Yeah. And at some point, you know, if it's actually usable, they'll just say advertising or just say that's your one-ton me stall. It just happens to be online. So I, I, I think it's a really weird red herring with this ad tech thing, but I'll no, go back to your, your question, no, right? No. Yeah. Uh, I'll go back to your question, right? How do you do this? How do you do this well? And I think the context for this audience is how do you do it well when you don't have a lot of people? You may or may not have an agency. Some of the bigger ones on the call might have an agency. Maybe a lot of people don't have an agency. And how do you do it really well, right? And, and I think you, you just do, the, the, the answer is do something on digital because the way the, consum the media consumption patterns have changed, you know, you're smaller your budget and the, 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 the eyeballs are increasing, go to digital. What you do there, what you do there is just decide what you're good at doing naturally. If you have a very small team, do very, very few things well. If you have a one-man team, do one or two things. Hopefully, they're all Google and Facebook. Well, because at least Google and Facebook can, has all the tools to help you do a lot of the, the heavy lifting stuff, right? Don't do anything that you don't have time to do really well at all. If you have only time to do one thing well, then do that one thing well. If that one thing is because you have a child that loves Instagram stories or because you have a cute cat, or because your wife is really funny at telling jokes while you cook, do that because that is your greatest chance of doing that really well. Do that every day and you're gonna get better at that. And you're gonna use Google and Facebook in a way that makes you better at that. And, and I think that that's just, Alex laughed at me because for the, the time that he's known me, I've sat, sat on really large budgets, right? At telcos, like really, really a lot of budget. Grab is a much smaller budget market here. But I think where I'm speaking from is that year I spent out where I was working at an NGO and I had, I had to do marketing, but I had zero budget. And, and that's the logic I used, right? What do I do really well that all the other charity, the single people carrying a laptop, pitching fundraisers for a charity don't do so well. And, and, and I do social, and I do, and I have a lot of friends in advertising and I made lots of funny ads on Twitter and, and lots of funny things at the bottom of my email. I, I, I wore, you know, I wore colors because I'm a girl and I like wearing, you know, it, it's, it's okay for me to wear bright colors. I, I focus on a few things that you do really well. Play with the little advantages that you have. Seriously, if any of you have a very funny or cute cat, focus on that. A funny wife, focus on that. Cute child, focus on that, right? And do that really well. If you're... If, if you need to spend a whole lot of time not cooking and learning Google Analytics, that's not time well spent. Um, and, and that's, I, I still think that that's actually the best advice is to forget the tech and ad. Okay, we've got five minutes more. Alex, getting to that and, and you know, taking it right till the end. Uh, question here, before ending, can speakers share some free or cheap resources available online? for SMEs to learn about ad tech further. Strike out ad tech, replace ad tech with digital advertising. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, uh, I'm in the business of, uh, of an advertising agency. So uh, almost nothing comes free to us. Uh, but uh, 
for someone who is just starting up, for someone who is just uh, uh, in the space of learning, uh, coming into the space uh, completely fresh, uh, there are a couple of tools that I would kind of uh, recommend, perhaps starting off with uh, Facebook Blueprint, right? It is a free uh, online course that allows you to really just uh, go in and learn uh, everything about uh, Facebook, uh, what are the best ad formats, what are the best uh, recommendations, uh, and, uh, and, and the likes of it. Uh, it is fairly easy to use. Uh, it uh, has all the resources there. Uh, there are a lot of uh, questions that I think people are going to be asking uh, in FAQ sessions. And I'm very sure a lot of the questions are also covered uh, in uh, these segments as well. Uh, mm -hmm. Aside from uh, uh, Facebook Blueprint, I think the next one we'll definitely have to look at is your AdWords certification. So on Google AdWords certification, it is also a uh, self-learning tool. Um, that covers the entire scope of uh, all the Google products, search videos, uh, display, uh, shopping, uh, even to a certain degree of analytics uh, as well. And they do have a lot of different levels uh, from basic to intermediary to experts, right? Uh, I think like Sulin said, if you are not, um, you're not gonna be spending so much time to it, just kind of go through the basic one, uh, gives you a rough understanding on uh, what are some of the important things you should look at. Um, from a brand, from a, from a business owner who's just starting out, I think uh, just as an example, uh, when you have a website itself, very naturally you want to look at what are people clicking in, uh, where are people coming in from, uh, what any of your ads are working well, uh, where, where are they, which page are they spending a little bit more time on compared to uh, other resources on your website. Right. Uh, on analytics, then you can, on even on social analytics, you'll be able to figure out what post is resonating better with people. Uh, what, uh, what is inciting more clicks, for example, what is inciting more engagements. And all these are, I would say, free tools, not even cheap tools, mm -hmm. you know, uh, that uh, most advertisers have access to. And I think the best tool at the end of the day, and don't discount this, Google search. Mm -hmm. There are so many resources out there from various uh, sources that gives you advantages, or at least gives you a good glimpse uh, into what you are able to do, uh, how to fix certain things and things like that. Mm -hmm. uh, YouTube has a lot of uh, videos that uh, gives you best practices and best advice, more than what we are able to give you guys today uh, in the last 60 minutes. So the, literally the world is your oyster and uh, it's just about where do you search it for? On, on that note, Hubert, I'm gonna try and end it with you. Uh... People yeah, in an organization. So as we talk about, you know, taking all the certifications and all of that, uh, there's a HR hit with me quite recently that he's made it a policy that anyone who leaves the company, uh, they will not hire a like for like skill, right? They they want to go for a skill set which is completely different uh, that is able then to take advantage of what's coming up in the next one, two, three years, right? The uncertainties in there. Uh, uh, maybe talk us through, you know, some of your thoughts about what the skill sets within an organization. That's required to be at least it's basic, right? If there's one person doing it, what kind of skill set? Because you look at Gary Vaynerchuk and he talks about the, the TCS, that one person able to cut and slice certain content to go into LinkedIn, so on and forth. You know, yeah. that's that's a superman uh, yeah. to get uh, through your LinkedIn search or whatever. But what's your views on that? Uh, that's that's a big scope, uh, Raymond. Um, I think um, one one thing that's very important here is is kind of as you as we move into 2021, um, is is kind of um, I think first and foremost, mindset is, is, is very important. Um, I think the mindset and the fact that 2021 is, is not going to be much easier than 2020. We don't know what's going to happen, but at least we know that the current constant is, is a pandemic outside our doors, right? So I think the fact that um, being comfortable with being uncomfortable, being okay with not knowing things, but at least having the grit to go and find out how to go and find these things. Um, and also when you, when you kind of plan your business to, to plan for shorter terms. I think, I know I, know I did when I did my planning for, for, for 2020, I had this big goal at the end of the year um, and I, I might as well, uh, I would have thrown that plan away uh, in April because yeah, the world changed. Um, right. So also kind of mentally prepare for, hey, you know, this change is here. Um, um, kind of build that grit, build that mental resilience for it, um, mm -hmm. and, and, and and kind of plan for shorter bursts. Now, that being said, it, uh, in direct answer to your question, there's a lot of kind of different scales that I think when you move your, your, your business online that are very interesting. 
Um, I think we've discussed many of the basics in terms of kind of like the, the, the sources that the, um, that the digital publishers like Facebook and Google that offer. Um, I think there's actually a whole suite of interesting stuff around kind of digital psychology and heuristics, uh, experience design that are, that are very interesting moving forward. So I think if you, if you kind of want to plan ahead two or three years, um, look into what is my category, where do I think it's heading, um, and, then, and then try and pinpoint these are the things that I want to develop myself in. Uh, but yeah, it, it, it's for success, it's going to be a combination of N and mental fortitude as well as new skills uh, that you will onboard. Guys, I mean, this, this has been a really good dis discussion. Uh, I'm not hearing any more dog barks or, or cats. Uh, you know, so we're focused on a conversation. One quick one, yeah? I'm going to catch you guys here. Sulin, we're going to start from you. Uh, favorite food and restaurant to recommend in Singapore now? What? Um, Long Fong Vietnamese on Ju Chat Road, available on Grab Food. <laughs> <laughs> Alex. Yes. Oh, uh, favorite food as well. Uh, I have to say, uh, Mak Lung Satay on Oakland Road. It is a small little satay stall uh, by this Malay family. Amazing stuff. Uh, Difficult. There's so much good food here. I, I, I really enjoyed this restaurant, uh, which is actually in Kep, south of Cambodia. It's called Khmer Bang Chat. It's by, the, it's by the beach. They have a very good uh, grilled seafood. I love to go there. Guys, thank you very much. You know, people are going to be starting to search your, your recommendations. But thank you so much, Sulin, Alex. You, were, you guys have been wonderful. It's one hour already. Uh, and guys, if you have any questions, please continue to send them to us. My thanks to Marketing Magazine for, for pulling together as well. Right? Uh, so take care. Stay safe, everyone. And catch the videos yesterday. And there's another session coming tomorrow at the same time. Yeah. So do stay with us until tomorrow. Bye, all. Right. Thank you, guys. Cheers. Bye-bye.